if there was ever a time in history when we needed a friend. You know, I had to, and don't, don't, this is, this is at no extra charge. You don't have to tape this. But uh, believe it or not, I had a thought the other night. <laughs> Scary, huh? <laughs> and it has nothing to do directly with this virus issue or whatever. But what's going on in the streets? And I don't know how many of you are, have ever had a flashback. And I'm not saying that to be smart, Alec. But I could see the 60s. If you weren't there, it doesn't matter. If you were there, you probably didn't remember it. You weren't there. So uh, <laughs> it's just the violence in the streets. Pick an issue. And let's just see how much we can get away with. Who does that sound like? Doesn't that sound like the master troublemaker? Church, we're not battling against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers that are higher than anything we can imagine. Amen? All right. This morning, if you have a Bible or a cell phone or however you indulge the Word of God, let's turn to Mark chapter 5 to something that it's one of those areas of Scripture which we think we're so familiar with that if and when we read it, we just slide right over it. We have a superficial understanding, and we feel like we know what's going on. But I think, and I be, feel like I am saying this under more than my own authority, that there's more to any of the scriptures that we read than meets the eye. So with that in mind, Mark chapter 5, let's begin reading in verse 25. A certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years, had suffered many things of many physicians, had spent all that she had, was nothing better, but rather grew worse, when she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And the disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came, fell down before him, and told him all the truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be whole of your plague. Father, again today we, we are all at times guilty of superficially reading your word. Father, to satisfy some, some vague sense of self-satisfaction. But Father, help us this morning to apply your word, not just to the superficial issue that we read, but Father, to go deeper and make it more personal than we have ever done before. Thank you for what the results will be in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I, I, I love the King James. You all know that. And in King James in verse 25, and I know the CSB doesn't use this word and probably the NIV doesn't either, but he says in verse 25, he uses the word issue. And I want to, without being facetious or smart aleck or anything else, I want to use that word in a broader context because it is so appropriate to the time in which we live. The problem this woman had goes so much further than simply the superficial one we see when we quickly read and say, okay, she had a bleeding problem. But it's an issue. 
in more ways than one. And all of us have our own version and our own set of issues. Whether it's issues that come from within ourselves or issues that are brought to us from the outside, the fact remains we all have to deal with them, usually on a daily basis. And the question this morning is, how do you deal with yours? Where do, where do you look for answers for the things that trouble you? Where, where do you find the help you need when there are circumstances on your job and in your marriage or with your children and with your health and the list just continues and all the things you have to deal with. This woman in our text had an issue that was literally draining the life out of her. Mark 25 said, she had this physical problem and she could not overcome it even though she had tried every available means that she could find. Under the law, this woman was ceremonially, <coughs> ceremonially <laughs> go ahead, do that, yeah, unclean. And that means that anything or anyone that she touched or touched her instantly also became ceremonially unclean. Leviticus 15 tells us that she's unclean for at least seven days after this issue had stopped. Her illness had never stopped. She had suffered for 12 years. I know we've talked about the guy who was crippled for 38 years. This woman had this sickness that was slowly seeping the life out of her for 12 years. She suffered as unclean. There was no hope of her ever being healed of this illness. She could have only very limited contact with anyone. She was shunned because of her condition. She was cut off from society. She was cut off from worship. And according to the law, she was cut off from God. She had a problem that would not only bring her to an early grave, but nobody had an answer for her. She'd gone to doctor after doctor, and not one of them could help her. It just, if I might, and I know you know this, just like today, the medical profession is a self-perpetuating profession. What I mean by, is that, by that is that doctors support one another. One specialist refers you to another. If you don't think that's true, let me just run through a scenario that some of you I know have been through and we've been through also, all right? We've all experienced this. Your primary care doctor is good. They're conscientious. But then there's areas where he or she doesn't have enough expertise and so they refer to another doctor who specializes in the area where they don't have enough expertise and so Maybe it's like a cardiologist and you go through the ringer because you, 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 you just make sure that you're not having heart or circulation problems. And then <laughs> if you don't have heart problems when you go in, there's a chances are you will when you come out, you know. <laughs> but anyway, if, if they don't find anything wrong and then they refer you to a pulmonary specialist and they run you through a whole battery of tests to see if you can breathe. All right, and they, oh, that does, they don't find anything, so they refer you to somebody else. And when they don't find anything wrong or don't find any definitive results, then they start this long process of try and try again. And it doesn't end with just one visit to each doctor. Now you're on the list. <laughs> and now you come back at regular visits to make sure that you're still staying well or, or they're still trying to find out if you really have a problem or not. And so after two trips to the ER and three days in the hospital and six or seven doctors later, nobody still knows exactly what's wrong with you and so they don't know how to treat it. I can't imagine, I can't begin to imagine what this woman went through. 
for 12 years. A never-ending cycle. It drains you physically, mentally, financially. Every time you go through the door of a medical facility, whether it's a doctor's office, a clinic, a hospital, you might as well just get ready to sign over your paycheck. And there's no escaping the co-pays. And, and if you, oh, if you don't have insurance, you're going to die. <laughs> and very few can afford any kind of treatment if they don't have insurance. So, so what does this woman's problem say for us this morning? What is she telling us? Well, first, according to the Bible, the life of the body is in the blood. Any kind of problem that involves your blood is a serious problem. Blood carries nourishment and oxygen to our cells, removes the toxins, the poisons. So if it's not working right, not flowing normally or doing the job it should, then you can become seriously ill. The center of our circulatory system we usually think of as the heart. Contraction, relaxation determines your blood pressure. If it's too high, you're a stroke threat. If it's too low, then you can get lethargic and weak and incoherent. The fact is, the condition of the blood in our bodies is either going to make us healthy or make us sick. And the second thing, possibly more important, that we have to deal with about our blood is that we are all born with blood that is already tainted by the sin of Adam. And that poison of sin makes every one of us unclean. We're born into sin, and that makes us unacceptable to the presence of our holy God. Separated from him, unable to offer any sacrifice, any answer that's acceptable. Oh, yeah, we always try to find other ways, just like this woman did. None of the things we try will make a difference. Oh, we give offerings of our time and our talent and our money, and none of those are going to buy deliverance from sin. We can shake the preacher's hand, memorize the entire Bible, and still not be free from the poison of sin. We can go to church faithfully, spend our lives in service to the church, to our fellow man, but no matter how good these things are, they cannot deliver us from the sin that holds us in its death grip. There's only one answer for the issue of our blood and any other issue in our lives, and it's the same answer that this woman found. She heard about Jesus. Dear John, every person on the planet practically has heard about Jesus. Heard about, I grew up hearing about Jesus. In fact, he, he was part of my vocabulary, especially when I was under the influence but she just, what, what is the problem this morning? You, you've got to face this sooner or later. You try doctors, psychiatrists, lawyers, maybe even your preacher, and still you don't have any answers. That's because you'll never find your answers in any human being. Sometimes people that you consult have enough issues of their own, and they're dealing with them somehow, and they can't help you. If they can't help themselves, how are they going to help you? I don't have a problem with going to the doctor or going to a counselor. I believe God gives us the wisdom to seek help where it can be found. And I thank God that he gives other people wisdom and knowledge and training so that they are available to help us with some of our needs. But there are no specialists who can help you overcome the spiritual disease of sin. That help only comes from Jesus. See, he's got the only perfect blood. And perfect blood is what's necessary to cleanse us from sin. This woman found her answer. She heard about Jesus, and she knew that this was her last and only hope. She was desperate, 
She could feel herself growing weaker and weaker every day. Without help, she's not going to last much longer. She didn't want to die unclean. To her, that meant eternal separation from God. How desperate do we have to get before we'll seek the only answer that works? How far into sin and despair do we have to go before we'll look up? What will it take to get our attention so that we'll turn to Jesus? I've seen people get to the very edge of the grave and they'll look into eternity and see what waits for them and they'll make a change. I've also seen people that it was too late and they plunge into eternity without God. But thank God for some that at that moment they realize and they reach out like this woman did and they touch Jesus. It takes faith. Sometimes a faith born of desperation. But it's still a faith that believes, that hopes, that cries for mercy, reaches out to touch Jesus. She pressed her way in. She had no business being outside of her house. She pressed her way in this crowd. She was determined to get to Jesus, and nobody was going to stop her. Imagine this. The disciples are surrounding Jesus, trying to protect him a little bit, keep back all the other crowd, pushing in there as best they could. There's this multitude of people following Jesus. Some of them just wanted to see what he was going to do next, and some of them followed because they had issues of their own. And there was one in particular, the ruler of a synagogue, his name was Jairus. He came to get Jesus to go to his house because his daughter was dying. There were some serious problems out there in that throng, but only one of them reached out and made significant contact with Jesus. She pushed, she shoved, maybe she crawled, but she got within reach of Jesus, bent over in weakness and shame, but she wouldn't quit. Everybody around her recoiling revulsion. They realized that she's making them unclean. There were so many of them, they were pushed together, and she's still not going to give up. I'm sure they spoke harshly to her, warned her to leave, demanded that she step away, but she kept pressing in. She kept pressing in until finally she was able to reach out and just catch on to Jesus' garment, the coat that he was wearing. And I love this, Mark, in verse 29, straightway. The fountain of her blood dried up, and she felt in her body. You think she didn't know a change after 12 years? She felt in her body that she was healed. Just one touch of faith. One instant of contact with the healing power of God. And she was made whole. She had her miracle and she knew she had it. She could feel it. Twelve years of suffering, gone. A seeming lifetime of misery and rejection, ended. She was made whole and she is now clean and now she can worship God. What a difference just one touch from Jesus can make. And one touch from Jesus is all that matters. And look at this. The next, at verse 30, Jesus immediately. She got the straight way. He got the immediately. Scores of people were touching, bumping, shoving. People had been touching him all day and all along the way and, they, and some were touching him in friendship and some were in curiosity and maybe some even bumped into him by accident. But none of them had touched him in faith like this woman did. The touch of faith is different from a physical touch, but it's just as real. 
We only know of one other in that particular crowd who received an answer that day to their issues, but she did. Jesus knew instantly that someone had been delivered. Someone had been healed. He stopped, turned to acknowledge the faith of that one person in that crowd. If it was unlawful for her to bump into somebody, think how unlawful it was for her to touch Jesus. A man sent from God. It was unimaginable for her to come in contact with a man of God. And yet that's what she did. She came confessing what she had done. She came with a repentant and broken spirit. She, she was afraid of the mob. She was afraid she was going to be punished. But she was oh so grateful and so excited to be free at last. Notice the heart of God as Jesus spoke to this woman. He did not condemn her for touching him in her unclean condition. He did not belittle her and tell her how bad she was for being there. He admired her for her faith and her persistent determination. He called her daughter. He knew that she was truly a child of God through her faith and that faith in the power of God to heal had made her whole. Jesus told her to go in peace. Let me give you a little memory aid. She came to Jesus chained by her issues. She left him claimed he had called her daughter. And she left him changed. She was healed she was delivered, and she was at peace. Claimed, chained, claimed, and changed. Isn't that what we all need for all of our issues and all of our problems today? Regardless of how much we think of ourselves and how much we refuse to acknowledge even the smallest possible imperfections. In one way or another this morning, we're chained. We need the healing power of God to make us whole so we can go in peace. You're not going to find peace on the newscasts. You're not going to find peace at the free virus testing locations. You're not going to find peace, no matter how hard you look for it, in the bottom of a bottle or in a needle or in a medication. Jesus is not only our deliverer, he's our source of peace. A peace that goes way beyond anything a human being can ever give you. A peace that's supernatural. So it's kind of a redundant question, and I, I guess you could frame it this way. Either, either you have problems and issues this morning or somebody propped you up and you really ought not be above ground. It could be plagued by sickness. It could be emotional problems. It could be depression. Dear John, don't we have opportunities to accept depression every day? It could be just some form of... We it could be anything. But Jesus is here this morning. How do I know that? Because he came with me. He rode with us in our car. I don't know what you did, but he came with us. He's here, and he's walking out through there right now. You can... Jesus, how many of you, I'll just take a moment, do a little survey. How many of you believe 
in your heart that Jesus is moving through these pews right now. Yes. Half of you. Wow, that's good. Two hands doesn't count. <laughs> All right. So why not? Why not? Why not? Just reach out right now and touch him. By faith. Why not right now? Why wait until these things that are going on in your life bring you to the point of desperation? Church, I know what that's like. I've been there. I've done that. I got myself and my family so far down there was no way to go but up. It's no nice place to be. Why wait? Why do that? Reach out and touch the Lord because he's here right now. Reach out by faith. Receive the answer to the problems that you're facing right now. The Prince of Peace will speak healing and deliverance into your life if you'll only reach out and touch him by faith. You can go from being chained to claimed into changed. Amen? My Father, my Father. Thank you this morning. Thank you for what you have planned for those who will yield this morning. Thank you for the miracles waiting. Thank you for the things that can, the, the incredible changes that are waiting. The deliverances, the cures, the releases, and the overwhelming peace that's waiting for those who will reach out right now to you in Jesus' name. Friends, that's what these altars are down here for. They're not just pieces of furniture. They're here for us. They're here for us to find one-on-one -on -one contact with this Jesus that I've been talking about. They're here for you and for me. <clears throat> and I'm going to butcher that little chorus that says, reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. You'll find he's not too busy to hear your heart cry. He's passing by this moment your need to supply. So just reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by, reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. You will find he's not too busy to hear your heart cry. He's passing by this moment, your need to supply. Just reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. Oh, hallelujah. Reach out, church. Reach for him.